What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool Transfer News video and a Brazilian journalist has claimed that Andre Trindade, the Fluminense midfielder, is made for Liverpool and he would fit into Jurgen Klopp's plans in a very interesting, absurd way. So we have the full details of this interview that he gave and also all the latest news about Liverpool FC. But first, let me know your score prediction for the Liverpool Fulham game. It's absolutely massive that Liverpool, and very important that Liverpool win that game against Fulham because Man United lost to Newcastle yesterday and they were pretty much better than outplayed, even though they only lost 1 0. And today, Man City played Tottenham as well, so there is a small chance Man City might drop points. But also, Arsenal won yesterday, so it's very, very important that Liverpool win against Fulham. My prediction is a 2-0 Liverpool win with Salah scoring his 200th Liverpool goal, which would be absolutely amazing. And on TNT Sports, uh, that was, there was a conversation where Tati Mantovani claimed that Liverpool may find other solutions to the job that Alexis McAllister has been doing right now. And then he she asked a journalist Bruno Formiga whether he thinks Andre is a good fit for Liverpool. And Andre is confirmed to leave Fluminense at the end of the season, the Brazilian season ends in December this month. So in January, he will probably go to the Premier League. The big question is which club will assign him. And Formiga agreed with the claim that uh, he's a good fit for Liverpool. And he gave a few reasons why Liverpool should go after Andre. I think without a doubt, because Andre is a guy who takes pressure very well. He gets off pressure very easily. He clears the field very easily. In the rotation, he gives options all the time. And therefore, what Jurgen Klopp likes to speed up the game often. I think he fits in in an absurd way. Because uh, remembering Alexis Macarista plays this role at Liverpool, in the, in the Argentina national team, he does something else. If you look at what he did against Brazil, it's another movement. He's in a more open midfield, in line to the left side, than in a central role. And I think he did well in the game. But I understand that it shouldn't be plan A for a team that already had other figures playing this role with other characteristics. Andre, I don't know if Liverpool will come back to try and sign Andre again. But uh, because this way the Club World Cup can make Andre worth even more. If uh, somehow Fluminense win the Club World Cup against Man City and Andre plays well, that could inflate his transfer fee even more. But he has everything to fit into Jurgen Klopp's game model. A lot of things. He fits into several different roles. I think he plays easily at Man City, not as a starter, but I think he fits in. I think he easily plays in, the Liverpool, in this Liverpool team as well. And Fluminense has confirmed that Andre's exit from the club is imminent. He's only expected to play the Club World Cup in December and then he will, sold, he will be sold to make a move in the January transfer window. Liverpool remain being mentioned as one of the interesting parties, although the Brazilian media has been saying that it's Fulham who are closer to a deal with Fluminense because they offered more money. And I think it's very interesting what Liverpool do in this situation because we don't like desperately need a defensive midfielder like we did in the summer transfer window. And the fact that we signed Endo and Ryan Gravenbeck after we have been linked with Andre and Caicedo and Lavia, maybe Liverpool feel they don't have a gap in midfield because Bajcetic is coming back from injury, Thiago is coming back from injury. So Liverpool have high hopes that those two players will be available for at least some of the season remaining. But Neil Jones, a Liverpool-based journalist who is very reliable as well, he gave a very interesting uh, assessment of uh, what Liverpool might do with their midfield. And by the way, if you enjoy these videos, I do a lot of research to produce these videos for you guys. Please leave a like, it really helps me out. And subscribe if you like this content. And if you want me to keep making these videos, please support me because these videos only make like $5 per video. So you can donate via the thanks button below the video or you can subscribe to my Patreon where I offer uh, all kinds of different benefits and additional content. Link, link is in the video description. So Neil Jones said, if Liverpool are going to go and sign a new holding midfielder, it will have to be someone better than Andre. Judging by Alexis McAllister's start to the season, it's clear. They have signed two midfielders since they were linked with Andre. Endo and Ryan Gravenberg. For me, they don't sign Endo if they are going to sign Andre. 
because Endo is 30 years old. Andre is less proven in terms of top level football, so it doesn't make a lot of sense. Liverpool don't even play Endo in the Premier League, they, they are playing McAllister. So it would have to be someone who is absolutely nailed on to improve Liverpool's team straight away if they are going to sign a holding midfielder, or someone who is potentially so elite you can't ignore it. As such, I'm not surprised at the Andre situation. We will see whether injuries change the course a bit in the next month or so, which can easily happen. Liverpool have a brutal schedule. We are playing every three days, so it's a welcome boost that Liverpool already qualified as group winners in the Europa League because Liverpool can rest some players, but still, we have a big, big game against West Ham in the League Cup quarterfinals three days before we play Manchester United. So we absolutely have to win the next three games, which are Fulham, Sheffield United and Crystal Palace in the Premier League. And hopefully we will qualify um, to the semi-finals of the, of the League Cup, because I think now that the, the Europa League is done and dusted, Liverpool can focus all their attention on the League Cup and on the Premier League. And it's, it's always great if you Liverpool go far in all the competitions because it gives them even more playing time, even more chances to the young players to get experience, to get more football education. And Neil Jones said that Liverpool can afford to wait for the right signing to become available. You are not in a position where you are looking for someone to come in and plug a gap. You can really focus on the right signing, Neil Jones said. There have been a number of players linked, including Gabriel Moscardo, who is 18 years old, of Corinthians. I'm not suggesting that Liverpool will definitely be in for him, but if that's if it's someone of that ilk, a really young lad from South America, that's an option. And Andre also is a really young lad. And I think Neil Jones maybe is underestimating Andre's potential. Of course, I haven't watched as many games of Fluminense as the Liverpool scouts did. But uh, the bits and pieces that I've seen, Andre is a top level player already. No way that he's starting for the Brazilian national team otherwise. And also, he's a really, really high potential player with a lot of uh, upside. So for 30, 35 million, I don't see a lot of risk in getting that transfer done. But maybe Liverpool are waiting for an even better opportunity in the transfer window. I'm not really sure. And also Liverpool have to plan for replacing Joao Matip maybe in the summer and maybe replacing Mo Salah down the line. So maybe Liverpool are very careful in how they spend their money. And Neil Jones said if it's a longer term player, it's highly unlikely to be either Levi Cowell or Piero Hincapi who suddenly became available. I would lean on the negative side of that one at the moment, but a lot depends on what the injury uh, side of things is like come January. What Luis Diaz showed as well, and maybe it's different when buying an attacker as opposed to a defender or a defensive player was that buying a player who isn't necessarily filling the gap straight away can still give everyone a tangible huge lift it might be a, diff a bit different if you try to sign a fifth choice center back to you know signing a already almost world-class brilliant winger with a lot of pace of course and Luis Diaz at the moment we had Sadio Mane so Luis Diaz wasn't like a totally necessary signing but it still helped Liverpool a lot and gave Liverpool a big boost. Nonetheless, Neil Jones says they are possibilities. I wouldn't be su surprised if Liverpool did something in the January transfer window, but it would have to be, of course, signing the right player. It's not necessarily about Liverpool fixing a pop problem, it's also looking uh, at the longer picture. And I think Andre would be fixing a long-term <clears throat> problem for Liverpool. We still don't have a world-class defensive midfielder. McAllister is not a defensive midfielder. He can play there because he's such a brilliant player, but it's not his best position. Endo recently admitted in an interview that he struggled to adapt to the physicality and the pace of the Premier League, but he's improving and um, hopefully Bajcetic and Thiago can come back from injuries. Uh, talking about Thiago, Fabrizio Romano said, I've had some fans asking me about stories involving Thiago being linked with Barcelona in January. Of course, we know that Barcelona are now short in midfield after the lengthy injury to Gavi, but it's too early to know if they are going to replace him or and who could, they could target. With Thiago, I'm not aware of concrete talks with Barcelona so far. As I previously reported, Barcelona's priority is to register Vitor Roque before deciding on the midfield situation. For now, 
there are no changes and no concrete developments on how to attack, how to act to replace Gavi. It's also worth remembering, Thiago said no to Saudi clubs in July as he wanted to stay at Liverpool. As far as I'm aware, there has been no change to the situation since then. I don't think Thiago would want to go to Barcelona, having not played for Liverpool much football since January, really. He missed almost a whole year now with uh, struggling with injuries. So I still think that he would want to complete the season at Liverpool, try to win some silverware, show the Liverpool fans that he still got it, show the world that he still got it. So let me know what do you think Liverpool will do in the January transfer window? What do you want Liverpool to do in the January transfer window? I would sign Andre because for 30, 35 million pounds, it's a really low risk transfer fee with a lot of upside. It's similar to the Ryan Gravenbeck signing <coughs> where Liverpool signed Gravenbeck for 30, 35 million and he looks like a huge talent already. Andre could be a similar stroke of genius of a signing. And I also want to talk about the Euro 2024 draw because my nation Hungary was involved and we got into a very tough but not impossible group with Germany who are I think the weakest nation from the first seed countries and Scotland. So Andy Robertson will face off Dominic Soboslai and Switzerland the, the, from the fourth uh, pot is uh, probably the toughest uh, draw that we could have had apart from of course Italy but I think Hungary actually can get out of this group if we have all of our key players fit and available for the Euros and also if we play to the maximum of our potential. We can beat Scotland and we can beat Switzerland and even we can beat Germany on our day because Germany are not really pulling up any trees lately but also they are at home so they will be very very motivated. Group B is the group of death with Spain, Croatia and Italy in the group alongside Albania and Albania might cause a few surprises to these big teams they are a solid team with some good players but I expect Spain and probably Italy to go through but uh, Italy are not in great shape either group C for England is a pretty straightforward group I think England uh, will go through as first place team and Denmark Serbia and Slovenia will fight it out who finishes second I predict Denmark to go through, but we will see. Group D involves France and the Netherlands. So Konate against Cody Gakpo, Virgil van Dijk. And uh, the, there is Austria and uh, the play, uh, one of the playoff winners in Group D. And um, I expect, of course, the Netherlands and France to go through. But Austria could cause some upsets because they are very, very good recently. Belgium got into probably the easiest group uh, Slovakia, Romania and the another playoff winner which is one of the weakest playoff winners will be in that group so Belgium should walk uh, that group easily and there will be a small nation or uh, not a favorite nation to go through um, we will go through in this group uh, I mean a not favorite to go far in the Euros and in Group F, Portugal, Czech Republic, Turkey and another playoff winner uh, is in this group. So that's also a pretty good group for Portugal, even though Czech Republic and Turkey on their day can cause problems to any team. I still expect Portugal to go through. And I think this is a great draw for England particularly, especially. And uh, I expect England to go far in the Euros. And I'm really, really hoping that Hungary can qualify from the group stages because then in the knockout stages anything can happen so i'm really looking forward to the euros already as well thanks for watching guys i hope you enjoyed this video i'm really looking forward to watching the liverpool game and there are so many big games today to watch on tv which will be great thanks for watching have a nice day see you later good night